Uh, welcome to lecture number 2 of module 2. Uh, in the lecture 1 of this module, I discuss about the single phase rectifier circuit and also I give some introductory remark about the three phase one way rectifier circuit. Here this circuit I explained in the previous lecture, it was a three phase one way circuit and here it is giving the three pulses. Now, I will generalize this concept, so that we can go for the 6 pulse and the 12 pulse rectifier circuit. The, the same figure was shown in your the previous lecture and now I want to generalize what will be the DC output voltage and how we are going to calculate it. The DC output voltage if you will see in this circuit, here it is the pulses that is a, this is going to be this pulse, this is pulse and this is well 3 pulse in one cycle. So, it is a repetitive. So, we can take the average of this even though E A phase is starting from E B to E B E C here that is nothing but 120 degree. Now, there are so many ways to calculate the D C output voltage as I explained even on the previous turn. Here one way that we can take the cosine and that is a very convenient. Now, I will just show you how the V D C is going to be calculated for this circuit. Now, we can write the E A equation taking this as a axis. If this is your axis where omega t is equal to 0, now we can write this E A is, is it is nothing but your E A here it is your E m, E m it is your peak value of the phase voltage and then here I can write sin omega t plus 30 because it is a 30 degree shift. You can see here this is the going to be E A going to be 0 at this point means this angle is your 30 degree. Now, to take the V D O here which we can define, now hold this pulse is for 120 degree or I can say 2 pi by 3 and I have to integrate, integration we will see later on. This is your E m sin omega t plus 30 degree and this will be the integrated with the d omega t. Now, here since we are taking our axis is starting as I said here omega t is equal to 0 means we are going to integrate here from 0 to 120 degree because this is one pulse and if you are deriving this you will get the same expression which we derived last term. Another way here as I said and we will follow this equation because once we will go for the complete converter analysis with the different modes of operation, we will always follow here if you see this is your E A is coming, here it is your E B is coming for this, this converter circuit, this is your E C. It is possible that we can write a cosine equation, we can take a axis here, means our axis here I am writing omega t is equal to 0 and then we can integrate from this to this that will be again giving the DC output voltage. Means here now I can write here VDO will be nothing but the total span here taking as a cosine here. So, it is your 2 pi by 3 integration. Now, this is your axis omega t is equal to 0 means here and the total here it is your 2 pi by 3. Means half of this is this side half of this side. So, I can write here it is your pi by 3 minus here your pi by 3 means 60, 60 degree, 60 this side, 60 this side and now I can write again here E m now it is your cosine omega t d omega t. No doubt there will be no difference in the value here as well as here, only here you can see if you are going to integrate this, this becomes complex compared to this, this is a very simple because the integration of this is simply it is a sine and this values are also very small. So, there will be no confusion, but at the same time here this output as I derived last turn also it was your twice pi. So, this representation or derivation of video is very, very efficient and we will follow for the later lectures because we will see this wave shape will be not uniform all the time. There will be so many here jumps will be arising when we will go for the actual converter circuit with the different modes of operation. Moreover here, in this whole analysis will now we are going to generalize, this is for the case when it is a 3 pulses in one cycle. 
later on we will see the 6 pulse and also we will see the 12 pulse. Then this value in terms of if you remember I defined this q here means I wrote this pulse number p is q r and s. p is your pulse number and q is a number of wall in a commutative group. The group you have to form it should be larger and it should be symmetric and at same time it should be a uh, large number of walls would be accommodated. Now this R is as I said the parallel path and S is in series. Now in this circuit which here in this circuit now you can see what will be your Q. The Q here in this circuit it is nothing but we can form this is a, as I said even though one wall can form one commutation group because one is conducting at a time. But I said this is a large, num large number of valves group here. Now we can form here it is one group. So it is a Q is equal to 3. Your series valves are 1, parallels are also 1 and then we are getting here is 3 is to 1 is to 1 here we are getting 3 pulses. Now why I am defining here because this expression itself I want to write in terms of P, Q, R, S values. So that we can generalize and we will see in terms of P, Q, R, S what should be the best suitable feature or best suitable configuration of converter circuit. So now here if we will again in this expression which again I have defined here. So your video we can now you can see here this Q means is 3 in this case it is nothing but it is your I can write in terms of Q. This is your for all the circuit will find this is the basically depends upon how much duration it will conduct it depends upon your Q because in whole this 360 the 3 here the pulses are arising. So it is a 2 pi by Q is arising here. Now here again I can now write it is your Q, here I can write the Q, here I can write again Q and then I have to write this expression and if you will solve it here what you are going to get this expression will be changed now and we are going to get here this is your Q over twice pi EM now it is your sign pi over Q. So, your the DC output voltage can be expressed in general in terms of your Q that is a number of valves in a commutation group. For this case if you put the Q is equal to 3 you will get the same expression. Now there is another term here we will find here the number of this S that is unity. If the two valves are coming the winding is coming the twice in a one path the winding of the secondary of the transformer is means the voltage is going to be added and that is going to be added means it is going to be that times of this. So here this S will be appearing if there is a S number of series valve in that one commutation path. So your complete output voltage here without delay oh again I just I want to remind here I am using I am not delaying here is uh, your thyristors are fired at instant omega t is equal to 0 means alpha delay is 0 alpha is angle which we will be discussing later on. So your this video here in terms of your q we got this value. This value will be used when we will go for the desired features of converter circuit we will be using this video all the time in terms of s and q. Now another thing I will require here in this the wall voltage. Wall voltage also required because the valves we have to have the valves having the features even though there will be some problems in the mal operation of valve depending upon what is the voltage appearing across this valve. So for this example for this circuit the valve here having the three phases means one it is a conducting so it is 0, once it is a non-conduction remaining period is non-conducting. So the voltage is appearing in the different means here for your again you can see the voltage wave shape as even though I explained last turn here 
in this circuit once one is conducting here the voltage across is 0 once this is going to conduct then the voltage here this E B is appearing here and this is E A means E A minus E B is appearing across this once it is going to conduct here then it is here the E C is appearing and E A means E A minus E C. So, three different periods are coming here but it is not limited to 3. Here we are assuming that this valve the current which was flowing here is directly instantaneously going to be taken by this valve too, but in the practical case it will be not because there will be some time between the commutation that is called commutation period because the current which is completely going from this to this it will be taking some time means there will be some instance that is 1 and 2 will be also conducting. So, there will be another mode another period then voltage will be the different across this. So, we will find this voltage across this will be having the so many patterns and then we have to draw and we have to analyze because several times there will be possibility that due to the even though the short circuit of this two, one, 2 and 3 are conducting together what will be the voltage here? It will be just like a short circuit here. So, the voltage here will be different and there will be some sudden ju jump across this wall voltage. So, for the mal operation analysis and the protection of the converter circuit these things are very much required. So, we will see later on here we are talking the ideal circuit right now because we are assuming the current is if valve 1 is conducting and we are the valve 2 is fired then current is instantaneously taken care by valve 2 and that is why there is no two valve conduction mode. We will analyze later on. So, in this here I want to say that we have to very minutely see what will be the voltage across the valves so that we can draw the complete one cycle the voltage profile seen by the individual valves and that will be 360 degree. So, in this case it is very simple once it is conducting so 120 degree it is conducting and we are assuming our instant is omega t is equal to 0 when it is going to start valve 1 then E A minus E B for the remaining 20 degree and then E A minus E C will appear for the remaining 120 degree. So, this is a complete one cycle wall voltage is going to appear and then we have to see the in later stages what will be the various jumps in here and there. Now, another here the term which we are going to use that is your peak inverse voltage and again I am going to define the peak inverse voltage in terms of your Q. Already for this circuit we saw that your P i V is nothing but your under root 3 E m. It was found here for the different value of Q means Q is only governing criteria to decide what will be the peak inverse voltage across the valve and this peak inverse voltage is very important because the cost of valve is decided by this peak inverse voltage. If the peak inverse voltage is more we have to go for a valve that can sustain that peak inverse voltage otherwise this will be punctured. So, once the Q is odd here the Q is 3. So, if you put the Q is equal to 3 you will find that we are going to get here this value means the P i V in general means we can generalize here it is your twice E m if your Q is even. Just remember your circuit when we were discussing the full wave rectifier it was 2 E m the peak inverse voltage because Q at that time it was twice because the two pulses were there R was 1 S was 1. So, but the peak inverse voltage here it was 2 E m if you remember the when we were analyzing that your full wave rectifier not the bridge circuit full, full wave rectifier circuit. For this Q is here once it is odd it will be related by this expression and you can put here for this case Q is 3 you will going to get this value here. So, this is the general expression for the peak inverse voltage which is basically depends upon the commutation number of valves in a commutating group it is decided by two ex expression. So, the decision of commutation group is very very important. If you are not deciding commutation group properly then there is a possibility that you are just landing with all these wrong expressions here. So, the definition of the commutation group which I gave in the beginning of this module that it is very important that you have to choose the number of valves 
the group of the number of valves in a group which are conducting at a time and this is the maximum number of group of valves it should be symmetrical we'll see again when we'll go for the bridge circuit and circuit then we'll decide how we are considering all these now let us some other six pulse converter circuits it is a basically six pulse converter circuit it is a even the first circuit which showed i uh, i to, uh, showed you today it was the one way circuit it is called and we had the three pulses only now this that one way can be added in the two way means here here you can just see this portion the first half it is a just similar just similar to our one way only this was going as a neutral of this here this is the three winding transformer is just similar what we discussed just now there were three for the individual phases why it is shown in a just a you know curve manner because this transformer this is your if you imagining here it is your a phase now a phase of corresponding to secondary it is a here similarly if it is a phase the corresponding secondary here is here in this transformer so your transformer secondary having the two windings and these two are basically displaced by 120 degree already here i have written so what happens the rating of this secondary bindings increases so your transformer size is going to be larger and you have to be uh, manufacture in such a way that it should bear that amount of voltage as well as the current in the secondary side now this as i said here you can see what will be your commutation group here for having a complete path here we should have at least one ball here in the lower portion and one valve here then we can have complete circuit so the commutation here you will see the three valves even we can have two commutation groups having the three valves each means we are having here one group here and we can form one group here and in this case we are having the s is equal to 2 because here the three valves means in in this commutation group here lower it is 3 but we are having the two valves in a series so your s becomes here twice q becomes 3 and then you can derive the expression and you can get the video value so this general expression is very very good if you are exactly means correctly you are deciding your commutation group so in this if you are assuming this is your a voltage let's suppose this is a phase this is your b this is your c we are having here three phase ac three phase ac circuit then your corresponding secondary here it is your a one i can say and here it is your a2 because both are here corresponding to a similarly we can say here it is your b1 here it is your b2 and of course here now it will be c2 and here it is a c1 with this now you can see if one is conducting again the numbering it is set we are firing the uh, this valve in a such a fashion in this order that we can fire one from top one from here and it is like suppose your one and two are conducting then your third will be going to be conducting means one and two there then we are going for your third here means this will be off and third so current will be again going through this and here two three so it is the sequence of conduction means here if your one two one pair of valves are conducting then the second will be your two three and here your three four and so on so forth so the nomenclature here why one five and three are done it is only to take care so that this is easier to remember nothing else you can number anyone but that will be giving a very confusion but here if you are writing one five three and two four six then you are getting here this way of conduction and you can just see what will be the output voltage now if you will see the what will be the voltage let's suppose your one and two are conducting how to get the output voltage what will be the voltage here now this is a one means here b 
and the two where is the two a this is this a2. a2 means this voltage and this voltage is appearing here now what will be the output voltage when your 1 and 2 are conducting no just i want in terms of instantaneous voltage first so this this is value your now your 1 means eb here i can say it is eb1 here plus ea2 but i said the transformer is winding here by 120 degree spaced so if it is a positive it will be 180 degree of this so this is basically the minus sign will be appearing so the i said here the transformer winding in a such a way if this is zero neutral so this will be positive here if this is coming here this is zero and 90 means it is going to be added the voltage is going to be under root three times if you're adding then it will be magnitude will be less in the phasor diagram just you imagine here this is your ea this is your eb this is your ec now your ea here what we are getting eb minus ea means this will be going here then this is your resultant value if you are going to add ea and eb to here what you are going to get your output voltage will be less you see it here just add these two vectors 120 degree displays your resultant will be this but if you are subtracting it is going to be under root 3 times of this magnitude going to be so that is why it is made so that we can get the maximum output voltage if you are using the same you can do it but what will happen your output voltage will be less this is another criteria we will see later that we should go for the maximum voltage output across the DC. Same transformer, same converter circuit should give the maximum. So, your output voltage here in 1, 2, it will be this much. Similarly, if you are going for 2, 3, you will find it will be different. Means you are going to have 6 pulses and this is called the two-way uh, rectifier circuit and where we are using the two, three-phase rectifiers one way three phase rectifiers where I am calling it is one way means it is addition of this is one and this is your second we are taking care of. Now another configuration here now instead of there we were using the two transformer here we are using an extra transformer that is called auto transformer and R it is also known as interface transformer what happens in the previous case we secondaries were displaced by 120 degree here to introduce this 120 degree here this interface line is there means if your voltage is appearing across this is the positive this is your positive this is your negative and this let's suppose your neutral is zero now this you can see the upper portion and the lower portion is 120 80 degree displaced automatically so, this voltage is going to add here, this voltage and this voltage is going to appear here in this circuit. Major problem here you can see this part is no doubt one way rectifier circuit, here it is in parallel. The previous case it was in series, that is why it was voltage was coming. So, in this case as I said the two groups are connected in parallel instead of series to the DC voltage here they are in the this way. The three pulse ripple of one group here is going to be scattered here, staggered with respect to other group. So, what happens? This three pulses and another is going to be staggered by certain angle, 30 degree we will see here, and then it is giving the six pulses. So, this is also a configuration of six pulse, and here we are using an extra transformer that is auto transformer to introduce this 120 degree. Now, this configuration becomes very, very complex earlier people devised some of the configuration like this till your the bridge rectifiers were invented. So, people go for the different configuration if you will see another one here you can say secondary is having the six winding six phases means here the primary is three phase but secondary we are having the six phases they are displaced by 60 degree each in that one and then we are conducting the valves and we are getting the voltage. Here also 
what is happening to have this this is a going to conduct this one is conducting here then we are getting this voltage means your return path here is not this we are going for this one so what happens it is a each valve here is conducting one six of the cycle rather than 120 degree here because others were conducting for 120 degree so what happens here now this you are going to conduct only for this 60 degree not for 120 degree so what is happening your the utilization of valve is not proper it is a less utilized valve is only conducting for 60 degree and remaining it is off but in other cases it was conducting for 120 degree means valve utilization was better compared to this circuit and also the output voltage here is not high because it is only one phase voltage is coming here if this whatever the voltage is there this voltage is going to appear of the dc circuit but in this case we are getting the six pulses because one is conducting at a time and we are getting all in this six phase diametrical connection we, as i said here the one valve is conducting at a time and here this is a pulse number is 6 you can see from this here this is a if you are taking this as your phase a here it is your phase b and this is phase c then corresponding the phases in 6 uh, 6 here phase of secondary this a will be here i can say it is a1 here it will be a2 means if you see a1 and a2 are this 180 degree phase phase dif di displaced so your this 5 once uh, you are conducting the two valve is conducting then after 180 degree the 5 will become positive and then we are getting the 6 pulses. So, here instead of pair it is one valve is conducting at a time and the current is all the way it is flowing here through the neutral of this transformer. This circuit is now going to be complex because if you are going for the large number of phases of the secondary or even the primary the complexity becomes more and more and even the one phase that there, there is some problem then your whole this circuit will giving some sort of harmonics in this you know the harmonics will be more if your output voltage is not asymmetrical. For example, if you are having this is your pulses, let us suppose you are having the 6 pulses in a in the output of the DC and due to certain problem this did not fire and this is going somewhere here. Now due to this one cycle if you will analyze the number of harmonics will be the certain difference and it will be more harmonics will be there that will be entering in the system. We will see later on due to this sometimes even though your valve may not conduct due to certain problem there may be possibility that here even though change over from 1 to 2 may not take a proper and finally it is again 1 is continuing. For example, here your 1 is continuing 2 is conducting now the 3 was expected to conduct there is a possibility that we give the pulse and this 3 did not fire maybe the different regions maybe the voltage across this was not positive or maybe some other region in the circuit due to the weak system up there is also possibility and 2 continues here and third here fourth gets again the positive pulse means we are giving the pulses at the equal interval to the valves. Here the fourth was given again there is a possibility that fourth may not conduct. We will see in the different conduct, uh, circuits the voltage across 4 sometimes it may be positive sometimes it may not be positive it depending on the configuration of the fourth. So, there is a possibility even the 2 is again conducting and then after 5 we are again coming in the same cycle. So, due to this misfire or some you can say not conducting of the valves here you can see it is unsymmetrical and one symmetrical means there will be more harmonics that is going to be injected in the system. We will analyze later on and we will found this process is self curing process. We never do anything for this because after one cycle again we are coming back and complete symmetrical fault uh, symmetrical wave shapes are coming. So, it is cleared automatically, but due to this we are getting lot of harmonics in the system that is not desirable. So, the proper protection or proper correction should be done for all these things. Another configuration here you can see just similar to your this single phase full wave rectifier here. If you remember this is let us suppose this is your phase A this is corresponding to your phase A here and this is a center tap transformer of the secondary and we are getting here. Similarly, here this is also center tap of this B phase and this is corresponding to your C phases. Now, here this is it looks this circuit is very simple 
and looks the lot of voltage is going to appear across the output. Here it seems this voltage across here it is large voltage, but it is not so because you will find the total voltage which is going to appear depending upon the conductions again here in this group only one will conduct one here one and here one then we will have a complete circuit. So, your output voltage here it is addition of whatever the portions are coming in the circuit it is the voltage is going to appear here and we will find it looks the three voltages are going to be added here means there will be large voltage but it is not so because it is a phasor addition. It is not a just magnitude addition and these phasors are coming here the voltages will, will it can be analyzed the voltage will be the same. Here again we are going to have the 6 pulses in this circuit. Only here advantage that we are having only one secondary binding but it is a center tapped. So, we will be taking 1 by 2. What? 1 by 2 of the 1 line voltage. No, the voltage just you have to, yeah, because if again it, it depends upon what is the tapping ratio here. We will take the yeah, if the tap is unity of this portion or is a here half of this, then it will be added accordingly. So, the output voltage just we have to add all these three phases and this will be coming and but we are, we will see the pairs here it is going to conduct one here, one here, then we will get again the 6 pulse connection here. Only the problem here the transformer is half of it utilized at a time because in that 1 and 4 it is half of the binding is only co conducting at a time. Earlier it was complete binding was conducting. So, the transformer utilization factor a uh, transformer utilization is going to be poor in this circuit. So, with all complexity and the various things this circuit normally it is known as your GET circuit it is very popularly used and this circuit is having a tremendous opportunity and we will see this circuit is only the best suitable for our rectifier circuit in HBDC link as well. In this here you will see now the number of Q in this circuit will be the Q in this here again here in this upper portion upper limb I can say it is can be one commutating group where the Q is equal to 3. Similarly, we are having the lower here also we are having the 3 valve means one valve in this group will be conducting at a time. Only the condition will later on will find that sometimes even though in this group the 2 are conducting when there is a current is going to be switching from 1 to 3 here it will conduct, but here the commutation group is defined in the ideal condition it is the overlap is neglected overlap when means this two valves are conducting means the current which was flowing here it was going to be shared by 3 here that will take some time means 1 and 3 may be conducting at the same time that is called overlap period and we will come later on and we will analyze the circuit properly. So, here the Q is 3 what will be the S? Two. S will be 2 of course, because you will see here in the one valve is conducting let us suppose this is conducting. So, th this is coming here and then finally, it is going maybe your 1 or 6 it is conducting here means the 2 voltages and the 2 valves are coming together. So, S will be 2 and then you can find the output voltage here is double compared to the previous case because now here Q is same, but here S going to be 2. So, the output voltage also becomes very high is the double of the one way rectifier circuit. To visualize this, this is almost similar to again the two one way rectifier circuit. Now, you can see in previous case here the three windings are connected with the three valves and then there was a neutral. So, one portion here half and now you can even another portion below. So, this is nothing but the connection of two three phase one way rectifier circuit. Since they are connected in such a way that the current here if this voltage load voltage is same here the current will flow here rather than here because this will be the negative side. So, this can be opened and now this becomes your bridge rectifier circuit which is very very popular and we will see this is a 6 pulse bridge rectifier circuit useful for our HVDC link as well. So, I can tell about this circuit means in this circuit it is a three phase one way rectifier circuit 
in that circuit if there are valves are reversed as i said this one portion one and the lowers are reversed then circuit operates at the same as before only the direction of dc voltage and currents are reversed means one way rectifier circuit he here i am talking about three phase one way rectifier circuit so one way if it is a reverse then what happens the operation is not going to change only the direction of dc voltage and current is going to change so what we are doing the one positive and then with the reverse we are adding so the current is going in the reverse direction in the another wall so this becomes your bridge rectifier circuit here it is the same transformer is feeding two one way rectifiers of opposite connections as i said that is the similar the output voltage is doubled due to the s is equal to 2 and thus the power of the same circuit here the here another will find the peak inverse voltage is also same with the, that one means it is your under root 3 em in this case means it is not going to change but your video is going to be twice of the previous case means it is your the previous case here so that's why this circuit is very useful for high voltage application and your high power high voltage means if you are going to increase the peak inverse voltage for the high voltage then the cost of rectifier circuit or cost of your valve is going to be very very high means we have to design for the peak inverse voltage another advantage in this circuit if you'll see our in the analysis of the current which i did in the previous lecture we found there is a some dc current in the secondary of the transformer but in this case there is no dc current in the secondary of the transformer in this circuit again we'll analyze and we'll find that's here because always we are having the current that is circulating means we are getting the ac current and the pulse here become 6 is the 6 pulse rectifier circuit now let us see the summarization of complete all these circuit analysis we require these four features for uh, any good converter circuit means we require the large number of pulses large of pulses why we require large number of pulses that it will reduce the harmonics both ac side as well as the dc side but it is also not possible that you can go very large number of pulses then your circuit becomes very very complex so we have to think we have to go for the optimal number of pulse numbers normally the six pulse converters are very very good because the six pulse and then we can see other the desired merits or features of converter circuit six pulse is optimal but at the same time we can make the two six pulses and will shift by certain angle means 30 degree will get the 12 pulse means i want to tell here this is your your six pulse we can have another six pulse but it is here it is starting your zero i am shifting here because this is a, your 60 degree i am shifting 30 degree means we are having this and we are going to add then in one cycle we are going to have the 12 pulse this two six pulses are added together and we have a very good feature of the three winding transformers that if one transformer is your star star another is your star delta this corresponding to this and this corresponding to this and then we are putting in the series we are getting the 12 pulses that's why most of the hvdc links they are operating on the 12 pulse converter basis so here one transformer here because already is the star delta as we know that due to the star delta transformation there is a 30 degree shift again it depends upon this is a leading or lagging depending upon the winding configurations how it is placed in the co core but certainly there will be 30 degree shift and due to this we are now going to have the 12 pulses here 6 here 6 and the total pulse number is 12 so if you are going for the large number of pulses here the harmony is only advantage of the number of pulses if you are going more means it is just like uh, your the dc output becomes more smooth and at the same time here you the dc harmonics as well as the ac harmonics dc harmonics is the basically harmonics that is appearing across the dc dc line 
and your AC is that is going to be reflected back to the transformer and then finally going to the AC circuits. So, both in this case the 12 pulse is better than 6 pulse and we will find we will see the harmonics component in the actual operation circuit and we will find normally as I'll, even in the beginning I said the harmonics component for the 6 pulse it is your NP plus minus 1. It's very common here if you are going per 12 now you can see n is your integer value means it is a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, if it, you are going for the 6 pulse cases you are going to have your 5th, 7th, you are going to 11th and 13th and so on and so forth. Now, if you are going for the 12 pulse here you will find this is going to be cancelled and we are having this and then and so on and so forth. What happens? this is basically going to be cancelled by the star delta transformer connection itself means that is not going to the AC side due to that shift. So, this fifth and seventh will not appear in the 12 pulse operation due to this phase shift here. It will be cancelled whatever it is generating it is cancelled by this one negative voltage and if you are adding together that will be going to 0 means it is not going to enter in the AC circuit. So, now you can see the harmonics component is going to be here few harmonics are eliminated automatically with this configuration. And also if you will see the magnitude wise those are the lower harmonics component having the higher magnitude. We will again analyze that the magnitude of this harmonic current will be more compared to this. So, the magnitude here also going to reduce and some of the cancel to the 12 pulse operations normally used in HBDC link again this 12 pulse operation is nothing but your operation of 6 pulse and having the 2 transformers and connecting the series in the secondary side. Another requirement is your this peak inverse voltage should be as low as possible. The reason is obvious that if the peak inverse voltage is less here means we are going to have a less costly your valve means the, this decide directly the cost of the converter because the converter is consisting of the, your valves. Here if you are going for large peak inverse voltage means you are the cost of whole circuit is going to be more. Now here why I am making the PIB by upon video because the video here we require this output voltage should be as maximum as possible. If any circuit which is giving more DC output voltage that is better for same configuration. So, this video should be as that is why third here you can see the video by E, E is nothing but your RMS value means E it is your EM by under root 2. So, video by here E is nothing but I can divide by here E it is your what will be this here into under root 2 we want this value should be as large as possible because if it is more means and this E is the impressed voltage in the transformer secondary and this video which is coming out of the rectifier circuit and this is more means for the small amount of secondary transformer winding we are getting more DC output. So, this value we want much much larger and you see it depends upon the only two values it is S and Q. So, normally we use the here we will see the Q is it can go for the Q 6 option and other thing we will analyze for all the possibilities of Q R S here for a given let us suppose 6 here your 6 pulse converter what is the possibility of your Q R and S it can be 6 here it can be 1 here and 1 means it is 6 again it can be here 3 it can be 2 1 here it can be 3 1 and 2 here it can be your 2 here it is your 3 into 1 here 2 here 1 into 3. So, we are having this all 5 combinations and we will find that we will see here we are getting this is the optimal configuration for all these 4 requirements. For all these 4 requirements we will see for the different for even the 6 pulse we will also see for the 12 pulse this is the best configuration which will giving all these 4 requirements that is required for HBDC because multiplication here is always here 6. So, the second here which I am going to say here the peak inverse voltage 
is basically not only we are talking about the peak inverse voltage, we are talking the ratio of the peak inverse voltage divided by this factor should be as minimum as possible because we want this more, we want this minimum. So, the ratio we are talking because again this is related with your, trans, your valves. So, here this peak inverse voltage is divided by your video should be as minimum as possible and thereby we can just reduce our cost of the whole rectifier circuit. Another term here it is the very important that is the transformer utilization factor. This is a it should be near to unity. The transformer utilization factor is a defined as your the RMS secondary power divided by the DC power. You know the DC power that is the VD into ID it is the in denominator and your output uh, your this transformer this VT that is your RMS of your secondary winding RMS voltage multiplied by RMS current divided by your DC power this should be near to unity because the ratio of transformer utilization factor is just related to the uh, your efficiency of uh, material efficiency of the transformer. Now you know there are so many efficiency. Efficiency here it is not only related to the loss. It is the efficiency related to your material, efficiency related to your performance. So many things are efficiency also terms it is not always is a P output upon P here. But here we are talking P output the DC output divided by um, no AC output of the transformer divided by the DC and that is we are defining. So, this value is normally more, but the reverse is always less than unity. So, this your the transformer utilization factor is also equally important and that should be taken care. Now, if you will see what will be your the peak inverse voltage divided by your video, it will be nothing but I can just write the expression for this. We will analyze. Right now, I am telling it is uh, optimality is not defined here. We will see, we will go for all these values. Again, this four criteria we will see because the first criteria we have decided that for the six pulse. Now, for all these three that the peak inverse voltage by video, another second is video upon E and this transformer utilization factor for all these five combinations we will find the table and then we will see which one is optimal. We are not going to optimize. Here we will see because it is not that we can have the 3.2 here because these values are set of your solutions will lie only in the 5 sets and then based on that we will choose which one is the best option. In the next lecture I will just give this table and we will see that this will be the best option and then why we will see the values and then we will analyze this. So, here you are the, the peak inverse voltage divided by your video for in again in terms of your Q R S circuit. Now, as I said we have to go for the optimal configuration means our your peak inverse voltage divided by video we have to write. Again this peak inverse as I said it depends upon your Q whether it is odd or even. This does not depends upon your Q what is the value because this your video is nothing but is a simple it is your E. So, we can just write for the two values one I can write here Q is your even and here Q is odd and we will find the expression for this it is your in this case it is your twice pi divided by S Q sin pi over q and here we will find this pi divided by s q sin pi over twice q when this is odd and even. Here this, this is a derived basically the based on the expression this and already I derived here your p i v I said it will be your 2 e m when q is when q is your even if you remember and then simply you can divide it here when your q is even and we can write here what was this expression 
this sign pi over q here this value 2 it was 2 when q is your part so here cos 2 q so just you divide this expression from here e will be cancelled and you will find only we are getting here even though e is not appearing because there is a ratio of the voltage by voltage this is also voltage this is also voltage and we are getting this one so in this case here as i said q is also coming too so at that time you have to take this expression when the q is your this when it is q is 3 then we have to take this here it is again even then you have to take this so you can write all these values for the because q is decided uh, for q yes and the p is already fixed you will find what will be this value so this is basically your this consideration here this directly as i said here we derive this expression only here the transformer utilization factor that i'll discuss in the in the next lecture because here we have to go for the rms values and other things and in this rms value now in the transformer utilization factor you can see till now we have not used r at all here in these two expressions no r but now r is going to appear because r is related to your current and current is whether the parallel circuit or it is series circuit the current will be the different so in this transformer utilization factor we have to consider now r s and the q as well and then we'll see we'll go for the different options and then we'll choose your the optimal con configuration so the, in the today's lecture i can summarize we saw the various rectifier circuits three phase rectifier circuit and we just generalize this whole output voltage in terms of the commutation group that is the q the series valves the parallel valves and we saw the what will be the valve voltages and that will be also required we also saw the pulse numbers and finally we just i came here and it means came on this conclusion that we require these four desired features for any converter circuits means we require the large number of pulses again the we cannot go for infinite number of pulse we should limit our because if you are going for large number of pulse your the transformer com configuration and the connection becomes very very complex so we have to go for the simple circuit at the same time we should require the large number of pulse to reduce the cost of whole converter circuit second we want this peak inverse voltage divided by the output dc voltage without delay should be as low as possible because the peak inverse voltage here now question here why we are not only looking for the peak inverse voltage we are going for the ratio because it is sometimes we want this is a higher value even though this is more higher and this is also slightly higher that is even though acceptable value so that's why here we are going for the output voltage I means the peak inverse voltage divided by output voltage should be as low as possible third config requirement that the dc output voltage should be as large as possible and fourth requirement that is very important is the transformer utilization factor should be near to unity means it should be very near because normally this factor if it is larger we don't want we want it should be near to unity this basically your this uh, rectifier circuit which i call the bridge rectifier circuit is basically this utilization factor is the best in that bridge rectifier circuit that's why it is used very properly and in this all almost all applications so with this i i finish here and this ends your is lecture 2 of this module 2 and we'll see now all this performance the optimal configuration for 6 pulse and the 12 pulse converters in the next lecture thank you